Okay guys, so today I've got a couple of different coins to show you. I've got four new one ounce coins. Something a bit different and probably not something you'd expect me to normally buy. But these came in at basically a bullion price. So one ounce coins in general haven't been getting such high premiums lately. And uh, these graded ones, unfortunately for perhaps the seller, uh, didn't you know achieve a, a particular premium at all. So these are slightly lower grades than what people would want to collect. Uh, it seems that if it's not a 70, nobody really cares. And anyway, these are all uh, MS67s. So they are PCGS and we have three of the King Arthur and one of the Britannias. So to me, they're just basic bullion coins. You know, like I say, I don't think paying a particular premium for these coins is necessarily worth it. Uh, we'll talk about some of the different series in a minute, but for now, uh, just looking at the grades themselves. So the MS67, which means they're not technically a perfect coin, but they're a bullion coin. So they're just meant to be literally a bullion coin. You know, some have slightly better premiums um, in general, like you might get sets that are a bit more collectible. Uh, Britannias, they're just meant to be a bullion coin, you know, an exposure to gold and uh, a low premium way. So still, it's a nice design. Uh, the King Arthur design itself, I don't think they've done too bad. I think it's a bit of a shame to miss the top of the sword off. Obviously, you can't just have it sticking out above the coin. Uh, but in terms of the actual grading, this one here has the same grade as the others. But look, there's a little scratch across the cheek there. And uh, it, it is probably, you know, Roman's quality control. For bullion, does it really affect your gold price? Eh, not, not really. Um, but... If you were going to go and sell that to a dealer, they possibly would knock you back on it. Now, they would probably still take it, but they'd probably give you, you know, a little bit less money for it, or at least perhaps point it out, you know, if they if they noticed. Uh, but some buyers, they, you know, they wouldn't care. But the type of buyer who doesn't care is probably not going to pay a premium for a special design, you know, with King Arthur on it. They don't really care if there's a, a pig on it, a buffalo on it, or whatever. They just want the gold. So that's one issue. And then another issue I have is if you're going to be buying something from a shop, let's say you're going to go and buy a car, are you going to be happy that it's got a dent in it or a scratch in it? You know, if it's a new car, then you're going to be like, hang on, I know it's only to get me from A to B, but I'm not buying that one with a scratch in it. You know, I want some money off or something like that. You know, the Royal Mint's approach applied to uh, somewhere like Ford or, you know, Honda or wherever. Are you going to go and buy a brand new car and be like, hang on, the window smashed? You know, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna be happy with that, are you? So, I have a bit of a problem with, you know, scratches and damage on coins. Like, yeah, okay, for bullion, I get it, uh, but you know, there should be some quality control. Um, like I say, it's just a mode of transport. If we go back to the car analogy, it's not like you, uh, you know, maybe necessarily have to get there in a pristine condition, uh, as long as you're safe inside. That's the, the intrinsic value of the vehicle. You know, it gets you from A to B safely. Um, who cares if there's a scratch on the on the back of it or the door or whatever? Uh, a bit strange, you know, same as if you were going to be buying some clothes or, you know, new shoes and there's a hole in them uh, or a big scuff across them. Uh, you know, your new shirt and the pocket's ripped off. Uh, just, just seems a bit strange to me, that. Um, but anyway, in terms of, like I say, these coins... They got the same grade, yet one has that big scratch on. And I did check it. I don't think it is the. Um, I don't think it is on the case. I think it is on the coin. Uh, obviously, it still weighs. It's still, you know, the ounce of gold. Uh, but yeah, very strange that they all got the same grade. You wonder if the grade has paid any attention. Maybe, uh, maybe you do agree with grading. Maybe you don't. Um, I personally don't really mind. Like I, could, I get it. I understand why people do it for historic coins and you know, special proof coins and things, but for basic bullion, I don't think it's a good option. I don't think it would be, you know, viable uh, financially by the time you've paid some grading fees. So possibly not the best use of uh, of money. Um, but some people just like them like that. And I guess if the grading fee, I guess if you're going to be happy with that coin and you're going to get the value of the grading fee, you know, to yourself, um, fair enough, you know, your money obviously do what you want uh, so yeah might have given it away by the thumbnail of the video but uh, these might end up being cracked out of uh, the slabs for me uh, like I say to me it's just just gold bullion at a low premium and uh, 
yeah, as I actually do the voiceover for this video, the gold price has gone up quite a bit. So, you know, all good, but I'm a long-term stacker. I don't really care too much what the, the short-term price movements are doing. You know, if it goes down, great, it's cheaper to buy. If it goes up, great, it could take some profits, but you know, it makes it more expensive to buy the next gold. So pros and cons to that. Uh, but I said I'd touch upon series. So in terms of series, the Myths and Legends series, where King Arthur is from, uh, there's the Robin Hood, there's the Maid Marian, there's a few others, um, I think Morgan the Fay. I can't remember what the latest one is, but um, some of these series, you know, they're just not that popular. Like, there's so many options. For them all to get popular would be perhaps impossible, I don't know. You know, it's diluting the sort of collectors, um, if you like. You know, there's Proof Sovereigns, there's the... Uh, American and uh, British uh, collaboration where you've got the Eagle and the Britannia, um, the Liberty and Britannia, you know, you've got things like that. You've got every mint's bullion coins, you know, you've got all sorts from different countries. Uh, Australia, you know, Perth Mint's got loads of stuff. You could just look at historic coins, you've got all the LMU coins, you know, sovereigns. So some series and some sets are going to be more popular than others. Some will perhaps gain premiums, some will perhaps go in and out of fashion. Uh, but when you look, like I say, at the Myths and Legends series, uh, I just don't think it's that popular, you know? Maybe, maybe it is, but um, I think the design of the King Arthur is, you know, pretty good, like I mentioned, apart from the sword. Uh, just sort of not really out all uh, on the coin. But, you know, you've got like things like the Tudor Beast, the Queen's Beast. Obviously, the Queen's Beast was pretty popular. But when you look at the market now, uh, people aren't necessarily going to pay a premium for some of the weaker coins in the series. And then selling the whole series as a set is a pretty big ask. You know, if you're on the second hand market, there might be the odd person who does want to do that. But, you know, I, I know a few people who would just be happy buying like the sort of the money coins in the series, if you like. So the more popular ones, you know, the Lion, the original Lion 2016 obviously the Red Dragon, uh, and like I say, now we're looking at the Tudor Beast, the Myths and Legends, there's, there's just so many different sets and series, so some, you know, they will do pretty well, they will uh, perhaps gain premiums, they will appreciate, uh, but ultimately I think, you know, the best sort of stacking strategy to begin with, if you're not familiar with all the different uh, sets and series, is just to keep to low premium stuff, you know, if you can get something that's a bit different, at the low premium, so same, you know, these uh, King Arthur's were the same price as Britannia's. Uh, some people would probably pay less for a King Arthur because they just want Britannia's. And uh, there are some people who perhaps in the future might pay more. Ultimately, I'm not expecting that. I'm just, you know, in there at bullion value. And uh, that's basically how I'll, uh, how I'll play it, really. It's just, you know, bullion at bullion price. Uh, and to be honest, yeah, I might well crack these out so I might have given that away, like I say, by the thumbnail of the video, but we'll see. So that's my opinion on uh, some of the grading, especially for modern bullion. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments.